Uh, I'm from Burma originally. I came, my family came to the United States in 1978. Uh, I really didn't think about Burma again until uh, much, much later. Burma to me was always a place I came from and I was basically looking forward to uh, growing up here and I assimilated quite quickly. The year that I turned 30, I actually started to rethink about myself, who I was, what I was doing, how do I identify myself. And that was the first time I started to think about Burma again. And I really wanted to go back. My mother's side of the family is still in Burma, so I wanted to go see them. And I actually wanted to go see you know, the place I used to live at. But I wasn't able to get a visa. At the time, the only thing I knew about Burma was that uh, the 1988 uprising. I knew that it was the students who organized the uprising and they were forced to flee to the border. And I thought that if I go to the border, at the very least, I would be able to speak uh, Burmese. As a photographer, I just can't go and not photograph. So on my very first trip, I started to make portraits of people. And to me, the portraits were about communication through body language and facial expression. The two places I went to, uh, it was Thai Burmese border and India Burma border. I would travel up and down the borders visiting uh, different camps. But mostly in each camps, there are probably about a hundred people living there. Primarily, I wanted to be as close to them as possible. If they sleep in the mosquito nets, I will sleep in the mosquito net. But if they sleep out in the open, I will also do the same. People that I photograph have a lot of different ideologies. Some of the ethnic groups want somewhat of an autonomous state whereas some of the Burman student activists wants democracy. So they have a slightly different goals, but the first immediate goal that they want together as a group is for the military to, to step down. I wanted to portray these people as, uh, although they've been through a lot of different experiences, they have hope uh, and something to look forward to. I was at this one camp uh, where there were about three or 4,000 refugees, but this 13-year-old stuck out and almost immediately I wanted to photograph her because she was very beautiful as a person, even in an environment like that. There were also uh, other interesting people that I think are more in danger than people that were living at the border. Uh, there are a group of people who operates out of neighboring country, Thailand and India, for example. They're basically lines of communication for the border and outside world. So they have these uh, underground offices set up in the neighboring country. They try to blend in as much as possible with the Thais, for example, or the Indians, for example. I would get emails and letters from these people, including a letter that said that all the places I was at on my first trip had been overran and torched by the militaries. And I assume some of the people that I photographed were part of the casualty. The project was ultimately from three trips, with the longest being six weeks, but I learned a lot while I was there. I learned about the Burmese history, I learned about the struggle, I learned about the sacrifices of the people that I met and I photographed. When I came back, I was very comfortable with the fact that I basically described myself as Asian American, a byproduct of both culture. And I also learned a lot about Burma itself. I was very thankful that I had the opportunity to relearn uh, about, about Burma, both politically, culturally, uh, and also the language itself.